Olivia Holas for Boca Magazine, and welcome to another episode of Boca Goes Live with special guest Michelle Olson Rogers, founder of Modern Boca Mom, an award winning lifestyle blogger, and a Boca Magazine contributor. So nice to see you, Michelle. Thanks for having me, Olivia. It's good to see you. It's been a while. It has been a while, and we definitely miss seeing um, you and all of our friends. Um, you know, we can't ignore that we are in the midst of unprecedented times. How are you and your family doing, Michelle? Oh, we, we are doing great. Um, obviously, we miss all the people. We miss going out uh, to events in town. We miss seeing our friends and playgrounds, like all the things that we used to take for granted. But luckily, we've been healthy, happy, busy, and, uh, you know, just the days are flying. We're on day 60 today, which is shocking to me. Who's not counting? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 60. So, and is there an end in sight? You know, summer camps are being canceled or postponed. Um, you know, we don't really know what's going on with the fall semester. You're also the director of um, communications and relations, community outreach at Grandview Preparatory School. What's the insight that you can give us? Oh, I can definitely give you some insights. So, I mean, at least at our school, I'm extremely proud of how the team has been handling everything. And I don't want to speak too long about it because I could really go on and on. But um, we're a private school. We're an independent school in East Boca. We're pre-K three through grade 12. And we've come up with a uh, re-entry plan for our community, as well as students who are interested in applying to the school. Um, that's really unique. We're going to hopefully, you know, obviously with the county's approval, um, be opening for regular school, but we're also offering a blended learning option as well as a virtual learning option. So there's really something for every family, uh, which is, you know, this is, it's a new frontier. I think schools are going to have to adapt and granted we're, we're private, so we can make a lot of those decisions independently, but um, I'm very curious to see how things change going forward with just Palm Beach County schools in general. So you, so there is an end in sight, right? We're going to see our There has to be, there has to be. I mean, there could be a second wave. I know that that's definitely the gossip. The, it's not gossip. It's, it's a, a real possibility um, in the fall when the weather gets cooler again. So I just think that any educational institution needs to just be prepared for something like that. But um, I think all of our hope is that, you know, even though summer is going to be a little bit different this year for every family, that by the fall, we will be so, so grateful to bring our kids to school and see their smiling faces wave goodbye to us <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they'll get to see their friends because um, I think that's really the hardest part for the kids is that they're missing their friends so much and I'm I have an only child I know you have an only child um, the loneliness is real you know she Avery, my daughter, who's who just turned seven, I mean, she has become a FaceTiming master just because she wants to see her friends, you know, however she can. I mean, but I think the kids have adapted like pretty well, all things considered. A hundred percent. I think kids are really resilient and we've got to give them so much more credit. I mean, it's really great to see them adapt to um, our new normal, I guess, for now. So, you know, as a family, you have your daughter, your husband, you know, what are you as a family doing to kind of be quarantine boredom? Well, I, I actually made a joke to somebody yesterday saying I'd like to meet the person or the parent rather who has been bored in quarantine because we really have not faced that here. I think the biggest struggle for us as a family just being home all the time is just trying to find a balance with the screens yeah. because obviously, you know, you're on a screen in the morning for homeschool. At our school at Grandview Prep, we have a live session every morning. So my daughter attends that and then all of her assignments, she has to get off of a screen. Um, uh, so then it's, you know, it's very hard for me to justify in the afternoons when I need to work saying, hey, child, go watch a movie, go watch a TV show when she's already spent several hours, um, you know, on her computer, on her iPad, whatever it is already. So that, that's that been like, I think the hardest thing. Um, but anytime we've had some free time, we've kind of done things that are, we never had time for before. Like we've been those, that stereotypical family that's been baking bread and playing board games and just trying to get outside. I think Florida has very, has been very lucky to have the weather that we have had during this quarantine because we've been swimming. My daughter learned how to ride a bike. I didn't have time to do that before this whole thing hit. So that that was 
a big accomplishment. Um, so just really getting outside and um, that fresh air makes, I think, a huge difference, uh, whether you're busy or bored. We all need it to kind of clear our heads and reset. Absolutely. And that has definitely been a reset. And, you know, down the road, when you look back at this time, you know, what do you think will pop up in your mind when you think, you know, oh, man, those days in quarantine, like, what do you think you'll reflect on? Oh, man, what will I reflect on? I think just how we've pivoted and adapted to just a new world in such a quick period of time, you know, um, events have gone virtual so quickly, and I don't think that they've lost how effective they are, like networking events, for example. Um, I host a thriving Mommy and Me program at Grandview, and we obviously had to cancel that with everything that's been going on, so we've done virtual versions of that, and we've gotten great feedback. Um, I also think that, I, again, I have to give credit to all the schools and especially the teachers out there because last week was teacher appreciation week and um you know we did our best to really honor them but man they turned things around quickly to get make sure that there was no lapse in our kids education so i think i'll look back and just be really proud of how um not only our family but the community in general just really rallied to try to keep life as as normal as possible Right. Absolutely. And, you know, let's talk about modern book of mom. You know, I love your blog because it's so localized and you, you know, it's a really great resource for us local moms. And, um, it's just really great. You know, when you started your uh, blog, was it five or six years ago? Uh, yeah, it was March, 2014. So yeah, six years ago, six years ago, you know, the, the vision you had then, is it the same as you have now? Has it changed? Um, how has, you know, Modern Book of Mom evolved? Oh, I, I would say that I would say the core mission of what I was trying to do has not changed. And, and back in 2014, when I launched, most blogs were not hyper local. That was almost um, a big question mark for a lot of people. Why would you want to limit your audience to a certain geographic area? And I always told people, I said, you know, there are a lot of parents living in Boca Raton and it's growing each day. You know, Boca is not that retirement community that it was known to be 20, 25 years ago. And I'm a Boca native. I grew up here, but I'd also spent most of my 20s in New York City, so I saw the power of media and how when it was really targeted um, to something, it could be successful. So um, I kind of took that experience. Um, I was in public relations when I lived in New York and uh, decided to flip the script and become the media uh, when I came down here. And uh, my daughter was really young at the time, and my mission was very simple. You know, I was a new mom. The Boca Raton that I knew as a teenager was was not the same city that I now needed as a parent. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go online and I'm going to try to create this hub for information for parents, like especially parents who are either new to the area or they have young children and they're just not sure where to go, where to shop, what to do, that kind of thing, and just kind of become that go-to resource for them. And I would say in terms of evolution, really, it's just, I guess, I've expanded my content. You know, I really have become more of like a lifestyle blog. So not only do I post things for, um, for kids, but I'm also uh, posting resources for parents. Uh, and I, I laugh, I get a lot of emails from even non-moms who are just new to the area. And they're like, I go to your site all the time because you always post what's going on on the weekends and things like that. And um, it's just, it, it makes me happy that, um, you know, kind of what I thought in my mind came uh, to fruition, but I mean, it's, it's, it's been a lot of work. It still is a lot of work. And this quarantine has definitely thrown me for a loop because, you know, again, since I am so hyper-local, a lot of my business is based around live events. Yeah. So I've kind of had to rethink how I put out content because I'm not the DIY mom. Like I don't Pinterest. <laughs> I don't craft. I want you to, you know, you're a busy working mom. I want to provide you your quick and easy tips, things to do, um, inside information on what's going on in town, just to kind of make your life easier. It's hard enough being a mom. I don't want to make you feel bad about yourself because you're not heading to Michael's to uh, craft your latest, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm not a do-it-yourself type of uh, person no. either. And that's actually how I came across uh, Modern Book of Mom was I was moving back from living overseas for many years and I had a little young child. And again, born, um, raised in Boca, 
but still it was such a great resource and you know so i knew of you before i even actually got to meet you so oh yeah i'm so glad for a really long time and so you know with, with with you know talking about you know the past few years where do you see your blog in the next five six years oh man okay that, that's the thing you know um i think about the future of blogging in general a lot i think about where i kind of want this whole platform to go because you know my daughter is getting older you know she's seven now so in five years she's going to be almost 12. um i see my content generally growing as she grows i think it'll it'll still target you know families that have younger kids but it'll also kind of provide more resources towards getting towards the teen years um but i don't know you know when i went to when i was in college blogging didn't even exist so now with technology changing so much i have no idea what the next five years could bring i mean i but what i do know though is digital is not going anywhere and i think that with this whole pandemic um businesses and services and brands have really seen the power of digital influence and if they've not had their marketing campaigns online before now they certainly will so i think that this space will grow and um they will look for people to partner with who have extremely targeted audiences so i'm hopeful that you know once the economy gets rolling and moving and grooving again it'll just you know help small businesses like mine to continue to move forward and, and be that resource and stick to the core mission. Um, but uh, also, you know, who knows, I think there's always a new crop of, of people um, coming into the industry. And I think that's great because everybody is an expert in something. Mm -hmm. You just have to figure out what that is. Yeah. Well, that's really great. And you know, you've been mentioning your daughter, Avery, and we really yeah. can't ignore her because she's, you know, part of your Instagram and your posts and, She's so yep. dynamic and she's definitely um, a star in the making. But, <laughs> but do you, you know, do you sometimes worry that with social media being everywhere and really kind of becoming um, all encompassing in our lives and it can be consuming, is that something you worry about your daughter's generation and, you know, the younger generation who really grew up with this? I mean, we didn't, we've kind of mm -hmm. eased into it but they're born with this. I mean, does that ever concern you? Oh man, I think it's like a twofold question. First, the question to the parent, like how do you feel putting your child on social media? And I, it's funny, I've been getting into podcasts a lot during this, this whole quarantine business. I've been walking and so on my walk, I'm just, I don't wanna listen to music, so I wanna learn something. And so I've been listening to like the Bucket List family. They're a huge um, online travel family. And uh, I loved what they said yesterday. And I think I really have the same perspective um, on social media as they do, is that they were nervous about putting their kids on at first, but then they, basically framed it as a family business. And so when Avery is on social media, it's usually because it's part of something that we're doing as a family and it allows us to spend time together and do things that we normally probably wouldn't do if I weren't a blogger. So um, I see that as huge value. And so I just know that my first priority is keeping her safe. And luckily we really haven't had any issues. I think that parents are kind of still learning you know what's what to do on social media so that's that's the first part um the second part as far as my daughter going on social media that we are going to hold off on that for as long as possible i've already secured the accounts for her because i think that um just from a branding perspective i think that's important uh but uh as far as having the maturity level to be able to go online and post something it's going to be a learning process um i want her to be screen smart from as young of an age as possible but at the same time you know they're kids they don't really know boundaries and so it's kind of um it'll be something we'll have to work through together as a family and really the rule will be for many many years like if you wouldn't want your mom seeing this then you're not going to post it on social media. So FYI, kid. <laughs> All good. You know what? We're going to end our chat with a fun quick fire. Are you ready? Okay. I'm okay. so ready. Let's do this. All right. Favorite color? Uh, green. Cocktail that best describes your personality? Mm, Bellini. Oh, okay. Celebrity style crush? Celebrity style crush. Oh, I really love Reese Witherspoon. All right. And next travel destination. Oh man. 
Many. Um, it's most likely going to be our annual summer trip to Maine, hopefully. So yeah, Southern Maine is our, our, uh, our go-to destination in the summer. So I'm fingers crossed we can go this year. All right. Well, I'm crossing my fingers for you. And last one, current binge watching series. Ooh, Showtime's Homeland final season. All right. Well, listen, so Michelle, thank you so much for chatting with us, for taking time out of your busy day. We love having you and, uh, you know, you're a great friend of Boca Magazine, so thank you. My pleasure. Boca Magazine is the best. I've been writing with you guys since about 2014 as well, and it has been an absolute pleasure. Well, thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of your day, and thank you everyone for joining us. <laughs>